Good evening, everybody. I'm Aaron Bean. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Uh, you said, what, what is Bean doing here? Maybe you didn't know I was coming. If you did, uh, thank you so much. So much to talk about. I was just told something, though. Uh, your vice chairman just whispered something into my ear, and that is, is that she wants everybody to switch seats. She wants us all to uh, sit according to our precinct. So, uh, listen, what I want to do is say something right now, though. If you like your seat, you can keep your seat, okay? Let's say that right now. I'm just kidding. No, I, I'm throwing her under the bus. I wouldn't know. She, uh, she wanted to me to let you know, where is Miss Jones? Marie Jones is having a birthday today. One of the found Marie Jones, happy birthday. Marie, it is good to see you. Well done. Okay, so no, counselor, well, uh, well, well timed right there. True story, though, uh, Barack Obama actually said this. You know, healthcare.gov is having a lot of issues still. How about that? Still. He has come out, literally has said this. He has said, you know, there's, there's other ways. You don't have to use the website or a computer to sign up. You can call the office and they will mail you a form and then you can fill it out manually, put a stamp on it, and then mail it back. And then he got back on his horse and rode on to the next town to spread the good news of, uh, of the latest technology. Yeah, he's got a... You know what? I, uh, I watched, and maybe you remember it, I... Uh, it's a scary movie. It's an extremely scary movie. I don't like scary movies. And that is Titanic. It's a scary movie. You know how it ends. It doesn't end well. But yet, I saw it the other night. It was on some cable. Yeah, I was flipping, and there it was. And it was at the moment where they hit the iceberg. And there was a time where so many people on the ship just refused to believe that they were in trouble. They just refused to believe. There were a few that knew and were making plans to uh, have their exit strategy, but for the vast majority of people, they, uh, everything was good. They just wanted to get back to, their, to, their, uh, to, the, to the first class section and then have their wine or, or whatever, but then it made me realize that's kind of where our country is right now. We have hit an iceberg, and it seems like uh, especially uh, many in our country are okay with it. Those in the media think everything is just fine. They're promoting it, saying that we're actually doing better than before, than before we hit the iceberg. We're actually doing a lot better right now. In terms of health care, it literally is the tip of the iceberg. You've seen some of our cancellations, some of our cancellations. I'm going to here to tell you that it's going to get so much worse uh, before it gets better, if it does get better, if we don't scrap this law, how worse it's going to get. You, you've heard the president talk of all the things that he's talked about, but you know, the first round of cancellations came because of what's called the individual market. These are folks that uh, that aren't that don't get their health plan at work because 66 over 66 percent of people that have health care get it from their employer that the employer mandate hasn't hit yet it hasn't hit because uh, they realized uh, as it phase in and they just announced the employer mandate is pushed back a year do you remember why they said that they said it just the imperial dictator Obama has issued a decree saying that this law has now changed and that the, the mandate for employers will be pushed back because they saw the great repercussions of the individual market, how there were millions of people that lost their health care. Insurance companies scratched their head and say, we can't make it if we have to cover all these things and comply while we can't keep the same policies. And that's what's going to happen on a massive scale in the employer market when that comes and when it hits a year from now, it'll be after the election. Who knows, it may even be pushed back to after the presidential. It's coming. You also saw, or we'll see, uh, the market that was bought up by companies trying to buy market share that underbid 
the market, underbid the actual rate at what it costs to insure people. They want to get in on the while it was good, and so they, they literally underbid what it would cost. And then here's the third strike, is that what's happening now is the scale of young people signing up is drastically way, way, way lower than the model predict, predicted. The young folks aren't signing up because A, it's, uh, it's very expensive, it's a high deductible plan, uh, and yet the penalty is only $95 if they get a refund. So, and they can sign up anytime, even after they're sick, so why would they want to do that? The folks that, at last numbers that we saw, the folks that are signing up are folks that can't get insurance anywhere else that are going to be really high-end users that are, going to, uh, that are going to really tilt the scale so that when the actuarially studies are done, not only is the market going to be bid to, uh, to competitive rates, but then it's going to skyrocket once the actuarially studies are done. The folks that are using healthcare.gov can't get it anywhere else. Something similar happened in Florida. It was a plan put together by Charlie Crist uh, four years ago. In fact, I'm familiar with it because uh, I was there when it was passed and it was called Cover Florida and we saw the same numbers. It was supposed to be an affordable health plan offered to Floridians that couldn't get insurance anywhere else. Well, the only ones that came to Cover Florida were those that couldn't get insurance anywhere else and they had pre-existing conditions. Not that there's something wrong with that, but what happened is the actuary scale tipped and what's called a death spiral is you can't make up premiums without charging uh, astronomical rates and the whole plan collapsed after a while. So we can see in a microcosm what's going to happen without the government subsidies that, that are being flushed down the, uh, down the, down the pike to, uh, to healthcare.gov right now. So hold on, I, I don't know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. It seems like there's, when America gets a slap in the face, when they start looking at their bills, and realize what their premiums are going to be, what their deductible is. Many, if you've looked at it, the deductibles are, are just uh, are astronomical. So hopefully America will, will wake up and realize you hit an iceberg. How about that? Uh, I'm going to tell you some good news later on. I just got a little, my mom gave me a letter, and I'm going to share you some good news uh, in, a, in a little while. Uh, I've been your senator for, uh, I guess, uh, a little over a year and a couple of months now. It is a pl pleasure serving you. As you know, we've set up shop, which we think is right in the center of, of uh, geographic where our district is between Mandarin and Nassau County, the beaches. We're in San Marco, and we would love to have you visit us there, or we would love to have you visit us in Tallahassee, uh, where we can show you exactly what's going on. I'm going to tell you, give you a preview of what's going on. I'm delighted that I get to work with, uh, with leaders like Mayor Latham and uh, Councillor Tucker and Councillor Wiley and others that I've had the pleasure of working with. There is one gentleman right now that I want to recognize. Uh, I'm going to ask him to come forward. He doesn't even know that I'm about to call his name. But uh, I've had this in my office for almost eight months, and I told him I, would, I was going to give it to him. But it's a, a Beaches boy who's done good. He is now your council president for Duval County. If, uh, president Gulliford, if you'll come forward. Come on, let's give him a round of applause. Hooray, all right. How about this? This was on the day, the day before you were getting sworn in as president, and I thought it would make something great on your wall, and well, I've had it. very nice. We, uh, uh, we've got big work to do with that pension. Yes, I know you've got are. ideas and things. We've talked about it, and uh, that may be something that we go forward with. We'll but in, in, uh, let's get a picture. Yeah. Here we go. In, I just want you to know that at the end of your, at the end of your address, I'm going to try and do my best Aaron Bean impersonation. All right. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> that's good. I hope there's time. I'm going to, uh, I don't know if we'll have time. No, we're going to have fun. No. Good on you. Thank you. That's exactly right. Well done. Congratulations. That's a nice piece. So, uh, very good. I know you had Leonard Curry here last month, and we've been in, in uh, committee weeks. We, for the last, literally for the last three weeks, and then a week before that, another three weeks, we've been in committee sessions meeting and studying the issues of where we are as a state. I'll share that with you. Right now, currently, we have a week off or a week away from Tallahassee, and then the legislative session begins a week from tomorrow. That will be when Governor Scott will give his state of the state address. 
That's when everybody is uh, friendly to, well, everybody's friendly all the time over there. We're all friendly, but that's where we'll kick things off, and then the 60-day the clock begins, and it's all business for Florida. Big things to look for, and I say big things to look for. Nobody knew last, last year, one of the biggest things that nobody even knew last year was, uh, was the Allied Veterans fiasco a little bit. That came out of nowhere and, uh, and swallowed a handful of folks, including uh, then the vice uh, or the lieutenant governor. So who knows what's going to come up, but things that we're planning this year going forward. A, the big news is for the first time in many years, uh, there is a projected surplus in the state of Florida, projected surplus, which that's worth applauding. I attribute to our governor, Rick Scott, who has made some extremely difficult choices over the last several years, but it's led, to, uh, it's led to prosperity in our state. And if you look, it's not an accident that some of the states with Republican governors are having more prosperity than their Democratic-led counterparts. So check that out. Google that if you want, if you want a map of where everybody's doing well. Maybe that we don't have an income tax is leading people back to Florida, the Sunshine State. Right now, in terms of job creation, we are number two only to Texas, and we are closing in fast on, the, on their heels. It's always a pleasure to hang out with the governor at a ribbon cutting or, a, or a, uh, an expansion of a business. I was with him just last month as we had a, uh, an expansion announcement at Green Corps. You probably have never heard of Green Corps. I've never heard of them either. But you probably have eaten some of their sandwiches if you've eaten sushi or sandwiches from Walgreens or Publix is another one of their big clients. They make a lot of the products and then put Publix's name on them. As, maybe I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> Tom Patton, don't say that. But they'll make them on behalf of them. And so uh, we got to go to their plant on the north side where they're about to hire a few hundred more folks, which is very exciting. In my remarks, I told them my... New Year's resolution, which, which uh, I have failed at for the last 10 years, it's been the same one, is to lose 25 pounds. But then when I told them, but this year it's going to be different because I'm going to make green core sandwiches a part of my diet, they all cheered and we all went home happy. So that's exciting. But that's, that's, not as a, that's a result of, uh, of hard decisions and to really streamline uh, the business, I guess the business red tape to make sure that we're on the top of everybody's list. Governor Scott has sent letters to everybody in cold weather states, high tax states, saying come check out Florida, it's a great place to locate, uh, and the sunshine isn't bad either, so that's some great things. So that surplus is, uh, is now at our door, projected of what we have to spend, or the current programs that we already spend, with the amount of money that's, that's coming in. However, I've also been with the governor as we're on a It's Your Money tour, how can we give that money back? to the folks who have given it to us. And there are several options on the table. There's one I favor, maybe you have a favorite too. The first and foremost is when we've got in trouble as a state, the one place that the state uh, hit everybody on was raising your vehicle registration fees and your driver's license fees. And if you've registered a car lately, you know what I'm talking about. Ouch, I think you gave me the wrong figure because I'm making this check out and uh, so that's something. So we're going to look at lowering that fee and rolling it back to 2008 or something in that same vicinity. We're also looking at a, uh, a tax on businesses. We're one of the very few states in the nation that requires a business, a commercial lease, to pay sales tax on their lease. And that's something that we would really be, a, I think, a game changer for a lot of companies that are looking at it. And it may not go all the way back, but if we could roll it one or two cents back, that may make a difference for a company to locate here as they line us up with other, other states. Uh, we're also looking at expanding your sales uh, tax-free days to go back to school as w and an expanded uh, uh, tax-free uh, day, as well as a hurricane prep tax day, where in the middle, right before hurricane season, all of the items that you should buy, that you probably do, the beaches, you know how to prepare for a hurricane, but those items that aren't, that radio, the flashlights, all those things that we need to make tax-free, we can have that as well as a ways to, to uh, give you your money back. We're also, at the same time, going to be looking at strengthening education. I predict that's going to do extremely well. We're also considering how we can make college more affordable. You've heard of the Governor Scott's request to uh, our universities to have a $10,000 degree, which I think is a lofty goal. They're sharpening their pencils. We're getting closer. 
I think that's something that's, uh, that's very, uh, very exciting. Now, I'm healthcare. I'm chair of the healthcare committee, so a lot, anything that's healthcare related will come through our committee. A couple of things that we're looking at uh, right now, big in healthcare, is once again looking at, I say this, but it's uh, not the radar screen, because last year when I talked to you, one of the big things was how is the state going to participate in the Affordable Care Act in Obamacare? Uh, we had two options. One of our options was do we want to participate in the, in the exchange, the healthcare.gov, and have our own exchange, or do we want the federal government to come in and, and run it for us? Probably the best decision the legislature made last year was to stay away from it. And uh, it was great because uh, I think of my mom. I think of my mom who said when we would go to the fair, she would always say, Okay, here's two dollars, play any game you want, but you have to watch somebody else play the game five times so you know what it is. And maybe that's, uh, that's good advice with Obamacare. We need to wait and see how other states do and see how it unfolds. And right now, I think other states are scratching their heads, why did we do this when the rules are still being written and changed and you know his excellently and his excellently and, and imperial uh, President Obama has just changed the rules as he sees fit, which still is a is a head scratcher. We'll also have the option of expanding our Medicaid program. Our Medicaid program, which you know, is a partnership between the state and federal government. And regardless of whatever we do, that program will continue to expand as it always has each and every year. Uh, it's one of the first things we pay for because as participating. The, the part of the gig when you uh, do business with the federal government, anybody that qualifies for that program, you automatically have to cover. Well, that number grows by tens of millions, and I've seen it hundreds of millions each and every year. So in a sense, we have expanded our Medicaid program many, many times. There's still uh, a chance to expand it, but I, again, with all that's happening in Obamacare, I really don't see the legislature taking that up this year as, uh, as, uh, as a viable option. We'll wait and see. I think, again, we'll wait and see what happens as it goes forward. We're also looking at a proposal to, now I'm going to say something, but you've got to listen. You know, the, there's a comedian that says, uh, you know a friend's crazy when he says, now just hear me through. Just hear me through before you, before you, before you pass judgment on anything. But there is a proposal that many Republicans have endorsed <laughs> to approve a specific type of marijuana for a medical use. I wholeheartedly do not endorse the proposal that Morgan & Morgan has, has brought to you or will brought, bring to all of us. It's a horribly written a constitutional amendment. It'll heat up and I'm hoping other groups will come rise up to tell everybody the true meaning of what you sign. When, when you want to help people, everybody says I want to help people, but when you leave it as broad as it is and open for abuse where any disease qualifies and anybody can write it. Uh, the prediction is all of those centers that closed with the Allied Veterans scandal or all the sweepstakes in every little shopping center are going to reopen and probably double the number with their own dispensing service should that pass. And I think that's just a disaster for our state. However, my heart does go out to certain types of families who have issues with children. Uh, a family that I did meet has a, uh, an epileptic little girl who is severely disabled that has up to 300 seizures. She's nine years old, 300 seizures a month, and has tried and has tried every prescription known uh, available in Florida. She's also done a handful of, of special uh, uh, procedures on a trial basis, those haven't uh, been fruitful either. But what has girls or individuals with that similar, rem similar maladies have used a, uh, a version of marijuana from Colorado called Charlotte's Web. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but it's a specific strain of marijuana. And it's not the marijuana that you think because you're thinking something else. And what this is, is an extract of marijuana where the THC is removed, the euphoria effect is not there in this product. It is an oil-based product, so it looks like a, a, I asked and, and looked at it, it comes in a baby dropper, 
and they make an oil extract and two drops, or the, there's just drops underneath the tongue of these stricken kids. And they, the kids that have had similar episodes have seen seizures go from 300 a month to three or two or sometimes even zero. Now that's the type of medicine that we want. And we've written this law in a way that it has to be under a doctor's supervision. It's a specific, it, there's so much guidelines of it that I'm, I think it could help somebody. And for those parents that, you know, uh, Michael Jackson knows that I, and Jackie know that I can cry sometimes, but to be across this table of these parents with pictures of their daughter, it's very moving. I think this is the type that we want to go in. Now, I've spoken to a handful of folks, and I go to young folks, and I speak in classrooms, and I speak to colleges, and I, uh, I don't know, every young person says they're going to vote for this thing until I explain, well, would you vote for anybody to have it if, if, uh, if they're certainly of the disease, but would you vote for people to have it if they have stress, or if a college exam is coming in and they should qualify for a stress related, and they'll put their hands down. So there's more to it, and hopefully that, that debate will heat up this summer as we'll all, we'll all get a chance for it. Other things that we're working on right now, as I announced last week, I'm a co-sponsor of a bill that's going to make Florida uh, continue to reign supreme in terms of being the most military-friendly state in the nation. Uh, and that is, yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting. One of the treats, in fact, Mayor Latham was uh, with me, maybe the others, that we got to ride in the USS New York when it came in, what, two months ago, and that was a spectacular time. I've met, I've since had lunch at a couple times at the, at, the, at the bases, and we have a plan to make uh, all, any, any veteran or any serviceman that's here, have in-state tuition which is a big deal because going to UNF, as Kara Tucker will tell you, will cost you 20 grand if you're from out of state, but it'll cost you five grand if you're in state. We're excited about that. At the same time, there's a move right now to make illegals uh, have, uh, have in-state tuition, and that's a plan we're down on. However, it's getting momentum in the house, so it's not a done deal, so we have to pay attention of how that's, uh, of how that's moving forward. Uh, other things working on, one of my personal bills I'm excited about is to unlock half of the playgrounds in our state. They're locked up. They're locked up because our school board has locked up our playgrounds and we don't have access to them after school. Jimmy Holderfield will tell you and Steve Amos will tell you uh, for their police athletic leagues, you can't have enough athletic fields or basketball courts particularly in Nassau County, they lock them up at 3 o'clock. It's locked up. So we, and their number one excuse, do you know what their number one excuse is? Sir, what's the number one excuse? Pretend you're a school board member. You're a school board member. And it's Al Alvarez. I'm going to put him on the spot. Al, you're a school board member. And you don't want to, uh, to let anybody else use these fields after hours because of one thing. What is that? Liability. You got a lifeline, Al, and they just all saved it. That's exactly right. It's liability, and we're going to take that away from them because we're going to give them the extended coverage, particularly when they enter agreement with the YMCA or a Boys and Girls Club or a Police Athletic League, that we should have access to these uh, playgrounds and athletic fields. We're, uh, we're excited about that. Uh, so we begin our session in a week. Uh, other things that are going to come up, there's a handful of things that is expected to be an average session with over 1,800 bills uh, being filed. Another bill that we're working on, one of those 1,800 will be a telemedicine bill allowing uh, technology to come into our uh, homes and in ways that we communicate with our doctor. We're excited about that, where we could have specialists, uh, which is pretty amazing to look at a TV screen and they can examine you as well as uh, uh, get a checkup uh, right over technology, right over through high definition cameras. We've had two presentations where folks have been examined right in our committee room by a doctor in Georgia, right there. And it's pretty spectacular, so look for the wave of the future. Technology is coming, so that's something that's kind of exciting. Okay, so let me give you some hope, because my mom shared a letter with me that I want to share a little bit uh, of that with you as well. And that is this. 
you think it doesn't matter. We're, we're here in Jack's uh, Beach at the Casa Marina. We're, we're all fighting. We love our country. What can we do? Well, let me tell you what, who took a stand, because just a, uh, two months ago, they were sworn in. These are commissioners. How about this? These are commissioners, county commissioners in Carroll County, Maryland. Carroll County, Maryland. They had enough in Carroll County. How about that? They swept out their county commission. Let me tell you, the first, these are the first three things the commissioners of Carroll County, Maryland did. First, they shut down the county's UN-inspired Sustainable Development Office, created by their predecessors. They terminated its manager. How about that? Second, they terminated the county's contract with the ICLEI, which is the International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives, the international organization that is working uh, in over 600 American cities to enforce the UN's uh, UN's Agenda 21 scheme. How about that? They kicked him out. And then they rejected the county comprehensive development plan, the sustainable development scheme that had been written by the ICLI as part of the print, to, as part of the point to take control of the, the cities. It's amazing what you can do when you stick together and come and take part. And I always so often wonder, where would our founding fathers, where would our patriots be if they were alive today? Would they be outraged? What would they be doing? Where would they be? Because they envisioned a lot of things. They envisioned, I tell you, they did envision the way to keep score and the way to keep a balance was an informed, fair, independent press. And they would just be shocked that the government just two weeks ago announced a plan to have government officials in each of these news organizations and there was no outrage. Nobody cared. And I guess the reason nobody cared is because they, there's no need, because they're already taking care of their agenda, which seems to be the, the left's agenda. They abandoned that plan, but still just the, uh, the thought of nobody caring would just be an outcry to our founding fathers. Where would they be if they were here today? I'd tell you where they would be. They would be attending Tea Party rallies. Latanya knows. They'd be, they'd be watching Fox News, because that's the only fair and balanced news they could get. They would be uh, coming to the REC meetings, standing up and saying, we need to do something. They would help county commissioners get elected in Carroll County, Maryland, and stand up. Just a city, just a little tiny city, but they're standing up and say, this is not the America that we grew up in, and this isn't the America that we want our children to go up in. So just by, and where else they would be? They would, be, they would come and they would pay their dues to the First Coast Republican Club. As I say to Scott, <laughs> we'll, yeah, and we'll, Scott said membership approved for our founding fathers if they were here. Uh, they would be involved at every level and they would hold their elected officials accountable and just as I hope you hold me and hope you hold everybody else that's elected, I truly believe uh, we all want what's best, but good gravy. If somebody doesn't hold anybody accountable, then you have a president who says, I can make my own rules and go my own way, and that's what we're seeing right now. So I am grateful to be your senator. I look forward to us, I look forward to us working together and making a difference. Taking the Senate has got to be our number one priority. And so I don't know what we can do. Make a difference if you know anybody in those key states, Alaska, North Carolina, Missouri, that are on the bubble. That's what's going to make a difference. Harry Reid truly is a, you talk about a scary movie, uh, the Titanic. Harry Reid is a scary individual of all that he does and all that he moves forward with, and that's scary. So we'll do our part in our state to make Florida as strong as it can. I know you'll do your part to make Jacksonville, Northeast Florida, as strong as it can together. We can, we can turn it back and have a great future for us and for our children. God bless you, and thank you so much for letting me support you. Thank you. Thank you. You sure? Thank you. You got it. Thank you very much, Aaron. You know, Aaron, we do have, we do have about uh, two or three minutes. If, we, if there's a couple of questions out here that somebody would like to ask, Aaron, we would do. Sure, absolutely. Questions, sure. I would love a question. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, I would like to know what's being done in Florida to counter Obamacare. What's 
Very good. The question is, what's being done to counter Common Core? Uh, much like my stance on, uh, on Obamacare, Common Core is something that we need to step back and wait and see how other states, it could be the greatest thing ever, but just the way it was really handed down. And of course, the more we find out about it, the more we think, this really isn't an independent thought of, uh, of a thought of program of how it's going forward. The Board of Education, Governor Scott has proposed uh, making very substantial changes to Common Core. In fact, really almost totally changing it completely. Branding it Florida Standards and making 99 other changes. The jury is still out, 99 changes that the Board of Education is in the process of adopting. The jury is still out and uh, Michael Jackson's wife is Pam Jackson. She is now reviewing as are others reviewing at to see if it's truly substantive changes or are we just doing window dressing. Truly, we want independent standards. We want to be, we can, we can judge ourselves against others, but we do not want any type of involvement from Washington, D.C. to come and brand or have any type of control over Florida schools, Florida curriculum, or anything of that nature. So I think we're heading the right way, and I think enough people have screamed, and that's a perfect example of saying, this isn't right, this is not the way to go, we need to do something different. So stay tuned as that goes forward, but people that have said, this isn't good, are making a difference there. Great question. Yes, Jackie, what do you got? Very good. No, Ander Crenshaw, is he our congressman, isn't he? I've, I've heard of him. He's also going to be appearing at our Lincoln Day dinner. No, Jackie, you're awesome to, uh, to mention that, which is, uh, which is great. Some of that bill, too, has some purchasing land surrounding some bases to give some buffer to make sure that, uh, that they're here. Joe Zimmerman is here, and I do want to mention uh, uh, Janet Atkins. Our working relationship is great. I told her when we left here, this was a year and a half ago, when we were just talking about the ferry, we were walking to our car and I said, you know, if we don't get ferry money, we can't show our faces here anymore. <laughs> so you know that. And uh, sure enough, this past year, Janet and I both really, it was a tag team effort, as well as uh, the First Coast Legislative Delegation. We kind of banded together and, and uh, have a First Coast Delegation. Uh, was a priority for them. We uh, receive monies to, to make the repairs of the ferry itself. Now, what's left to do? And the ferry, I think, is showing some rebound. I know others can, can tell that, but a rebound in some of the numbers. But we are back in line to get improvement money for both of the bulkheads on both sides. That's a $3 million per side, so $6 million. We may do it in pieces, but we're going to get back in line to make sure the capital improvements are there. So. Not only is it a safe ferry when you're riding across, but also safe when you're either getting on or disbarking. We'll make sure that's a, a great place too. So other thoughts, any other questions? Very good. Thank you very much. We'll see you back. We'll see you later. All right.